Hey, what's up? My name is Greg and Anthropic just recently announced support for remote MCP servers uh, in Claude. Uh, remote MCP servers are super exciting because they allow folks to interact with an MCP server with just a URL. And if you played with local MCP servers, uh, you know, they can be a little clunky to get set up. You sort of almost need to be a developer to do it. So uh, this sort of remote MCP support or what Claude's calling integrations is just going to uh, cause an even more meteoric rise of MCP servers than what we've seen over the last six months. So in this video, what I want to do is show you how you can build a remote MCP server using Python. And we're going to be using the fast MCP framework. And let me show you a demo of what you'll be able to do after we complete this. If I come here to Claude and I ask what time is it? It's going to tell me that it doesn't have access to the time and it only has access to the date because Claude injects it into the system prompt. But of course, the knowledge cutoff is probably about 12 months ago. And, uh, you know, the current up to the moment time is not included in the knowledge cutoff. That's just not how like large language models actually work. Uh, but what you can do is you can give this thing a tool so that it can uh, access a, a Python script, let's say, to return the current time. And the way that we can do that is by coming down here to settings and scrolling down to integrations and click add more. And I built a remote MCP server. Uh, it is at datetime.hihi.ai slash SSE. Um, I believe that stands for server side events. Uh, and then we click add. You can see that that MCP server is connected now. If I click here, it says one tool. You can see current date time is a tool, has a description of what that tool does. And then if I come back, start a new chat, and I ask what is the current time, it's going to realize that it has access to that tool. Um, it asks for permission to use that tool, uh, but you can see here that it's running the uh, tool current date time. It passed in the time zone. It knew from the MCP server what parameters it needed to pass in for this to work. And this is saying that it is currently 1140 or 1040 Eastern on uh, Thursday, May 1st. And uh, let's see, you could check my clock here. Uh, that is accurate. Um, so that is how we equip uh, Claude with a new capability that it did not have before. And I will show you the code that is running for that. Uh, it is this simple file server.py using fast MCP. We define the MCP server uh, and then we define a tool. And that tool quite simply is just called current date time uh, with that optional parameter on there. And then we have a doc string and this doc string will uh, describe how to use the tool, what happens when you use the tool, and you know what arguments you need to pass to it. Uh, and then it just uh, grabs the current time zone, it grabs the current time, formats the time, and returns it. And if it throws an error, then it kicks back an error message so that Claude can uh, reformat its time zone. Or to make a small change here, you can sort of see uh, what happens, like we could update the doc string. Yes, sure, that sounds great. If you're asked for the current time or date, call this function. We'll come here to my terminal. I'm just gonna add that change. And then if I come over to my render dashboard, you can see that MCP time is currently deploying. I have a custom domain set up here, datetime.hihi.ai, that points to this particular server. Um, and then once this deployment finishes, it will be about a minute, we could reload the tool via Claude and you'd see that updated doc string. All right, so now you've seen the end state of how we got here. Let's take a look at building with fast MCP from scratch. All right, so I'm gonna come here to gofastmcp.com or you can visit their GitHub page. Uh, you'll find very similar information on both. I've generally have found uh, the website to be a little bit more pleasant. Uh, so I'm just gonna click copy here on their getting started. Um, so I liked this version here. So this is kind of the, the hello world with a little bit of extra seasoning on it. Um, so we import the library and then we create a new MCP server and we name this thing. So in this case, I wanna call this uh, date and time. All right, and then, um, so MCP with instructions is gonna provide a little bit of additional detail to the model on how and when to use this. So we will add that in there and 
see if cursor, uh, there we go. The server provides the current date and time, call current date time to get the current date and time. So that's great. So we have, uh, now we just, we have a server. It doesn't do anything yet, but we do have a server. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do, and, and probably you know, the current state of affairs is that tools are the things that most people associate with MCP servers. Um, though I suspect we'll start seeing a lot more use of resources and uh, prompts, but uh, tools is probably what you're gonna be working with right now. Uh, so we're going to create a new tool. Uh, we're going to call this tool. Uh, it looks like actually cursor knows exactly what I want to do here. So uh, we're going to create one called uh, current date and time and it filled in the doc string for me. Uh, so that's fantastic. And it looks like cursor is just going to, I have uh, already done this before. Let's just, here we'll do it the proper way. Uh, please write the rest of this function, which given a time zone passed in via the arguments, will calculate the current time and date formatted in a string and return it. All right, excellent. I believe that will work. Let's move these where I think they belong. Although I know some folks do the inline imports. Um, great. And so now we have our function, uh, super simple function. Really, we're just talking about three lines here uh, with uh, some error handling. Now we'll try this out. It does give you a couple different ways to test it. Um, you can use FastMCP as an MCP client. So when you're talking about MCP, there's the client and the server. Typically that client's gonna either be Anthropic uh, or like the Claude app, or say, for instance, Cursor is probably the most popular MCP client. Uh, an MCP client can interact with a MCP server, um, and it doesn't. An MCP client doesn't have to be a fully featured app. It can be a script. Uh, Pydantic AI uh, is one that I've used in the past to act as an MCP client to interact with MCP servers. You can also use FastMCP for this. Uh, I think there's a better way to do this. Uh, so for right now, I'm just going to do this to uh, run our script and let's see if we can just simply get it to start. So we can use this fast MCP run my server dot pi MCP command here. Uh, I can rename this because mine is actually called local server and my server starts up. Anthropic has launched a really useful tool for debugging MCP servers and building MCP servers called uh, the MCP Inspector. You can run this with just this npx command. You don't even have to uh, do any installation ahead of time. And if we drop that command in there, the command is gonna be fast MCP and the arguments are gonna be everything that comes after it. Uh, if I come up here to tools, and click on tools, you can see a list of all the tools that are available. So my MCP inspector is realizing that there is a current date time uh, tool and I have the option here just to very simply run it and it populates the argument here with whatever the default was. So I click run tool and I get the current time and I see that it is successful run. Uh, this tool is so useful. I'm sorry, the MCP inspector is so useful because when you're building MCP servers, uh, you're ultimately going to be using an LLM as the client and the driver for that. And LLMs are kind of like the worst mix of computer programming of being non-deterministic and opaque. Um, so this gives you a deterministic and transparent way to interact with your MCP servers. And I'm very glad that uh, they shipped this. We could attach this MCP server to cursor or to uh, Claude desktop um, because it is a local MCP server. It's running locally on my machine. No one outside of my machine can use it, but the clients that are running locally on my machine can use it. Um, and so, you know, this is, uh, it's going to be hard for me to distribute this to other folks, right? And so there's a whole host of advantages that come if we can take this local MCP server and turn it into a remote MCP server. So let's see how we do that. Say two big differences here. Uh, first, we're going to go under transports. Standard IO is the default transport for transferring information from the MCP server to your MCP client. Um, this works locally. If you want it to work remotely, you need to use a different transport. Uh, and 
I'm recording this on May 1st. This is the day that the announcement of cloud integrations came out. So I want to get this video out. Uh, currently, as of today, the way of doing this remotely is with SSE transport, which is called server side events. This method, though, has been deprecated and we are waiting on streamable HTTP support in FastMCP. There is an issue open to support this and the creator of FastMCP has said as soon as the low level SDK, uh, as soon as it's available in the low level SDK, he will roll out support for it. Very possible by the time you're watching this video, you're gonna to wanna to do everything that I do here, except you're just going to want to use the streamable HTTP transport as opposed to the SSE. But I don't think it's gonna be a terribly big shift for you. And so the actual code that I used came from uh, under FastMCP server, under server, uh, under SSE transport here, uh, and I used this code to run uh, asynchronously, and I'm going to paste that there, and I knew that I would have to do some different configuration of uh, the way that the server ran once I pushed it to render, so I wanted to have control over the host and port, etc. Uh, and in fact, the way I'll do this is just to come here and say, please modify this to work on render. All right, and there we go. Uh, that is all it takes to get a remote MCP server up and running using fast MCP and Python. I'm super excited by these cloud integrations. So here's what we know about MCP. We know that they've been really popular over the last six months, and yet to use them, you needed to basically be a developer because you need to be able to clone a repository and then figure out how to set up maybe a virtual environment and mess with like a JSON file to point a cloud desktop at that thing. So these things have been pretty clumsy to work with, but yet there's still been incredible hype around them. And Claude just announced that they're no longer gonna be clumsy. You're just going to have to paste in that URL and you're gonna have access to an MCP server. Uh, and that's a really big deal uh, because now I think you're gonna see a lot more adoption from uh, less technical users. Uh, I think this will put more pressure on OpenAI, not that they necessarily need more pressure, but I, I suspect you'll see remote MCP support coming very soon there. Uh, and then because of that, there's going to be a whole lot more people who are uh, using these MCP servers. So I think you're going to start seeing a lot more companies launch remote MCP servers. Uh, and this is uh, a very, very exciting time to know how to code. And I think if you're getting started now, you've got a little bit of a head start. Claude is just rolling this out to users on the Max plan or on the Enterprise plan. It's coming to pro users soon, but there hasn't been a huge push just yet. So I'd encourage you to play with this. You can get your own MCP server up and running pretty quickly and I uh, can't wait to see what you build.